finally, we're going to take a look at the, this particular exercise. Uh, again, here we have uh, a latent print, uh, the tip of a finger, but of very good quality, very clear minutiae that can be seen there. And alongside, I have brought up the known impression to, for the comparison. Now, to simplify the demonstration here, I'm just going to use the minutiae pulling of one of the users, which I've brought up there. And as you can see, we've plotted nine minutiae in correspondence between the latent print and the known. So if we take a look at the likelihood ratios that have been generated, So here we have the table of likelihood ratios. And you can see the user that I've plotted, but you can see the other users have all achieved the same magnitude in terms of likelihood ratio, 10 to the power 4. And all those users have plotted the same nine minutiae. However, if you recall the charts and the information we gave you in the presentation, the likelihood ratio for nine minutiae should be substantially higher than four in many cases. So the, what we need to do here is consider actually what this particular software is telling us. Is it saying that, in fact, this configuration of minutia is not very specific and therefore giving us a true low likelihood ratio? Or has this likelihood ratio been reduced by some other factor? So let's go back again and look at that latent and known impression. So here again we have the latent and known with that particular user and the minutia marking. And what I'd like to do is first of all remove that minutia marking so we can clearly see the ridge flow. And I'd like you all to concentrate on one particular area, which is this area just here. Now, if I bring up that minutia marking again, you can see that the correspondence of minutia has been marked, but it's clearly seen that, in fact, the spatial distribution has changed. And, in fact, the ridge flow, the underlying ridge flow there, is not consistent. Now, the most likely cause of that would be some form of distortion. But as you remember, the software itself does contain a distortion model. However, the limitation of that distortion model is that it's modeling the distortion of a finger placed on a flat surface. And if you remember when we talked about what a model was in mathematical terms, it's not necessarily going to incorporate all forms of distortion. So in this case, what we're possibly seeing is the fact that the ridge flow has been distorted and it's outside of the scope of the distortion model. In fact, the lower half of that particular latent, you can actually see some smearing effects around here, which is indicative of movement of that finger during deposition of the latent print. What the latent print examiner, the expert, will need to do in this case is look at where this latent print was recovered from, the type of surface it was, actually try and think about the activity during the deposition of that uh, latent print, and through their knowledge and their experience, look at that likelihood ratio to determine whether it's truly a true likelihood ratio indicating that the evidence is less strong, or that some other factor has artificially reduced the likelihood ratio and as we might have expected with nine, this is much closer to extremely strong evidence. So what I've done here is I've taken three examples from the case studies that you've done that illustrate uh, three, or three or more specific points in relation to use of uh, likelihood ratio software for fingerprint comparison. Um, as you know, you've completed a number of other case studies, all of which have been designed to show how this type of software can be used as a support tool in the course of latent print examination or introduce the ideas of qualified reporting 
to the use of evidence and intelligence.